Friday night, Paul Truscott and Ghana's Usamana Akaba. Yep. Good. That's and close then, enough. Oh, again. It will contest the <laughs> vacant <laughs> Commonwealth <laughs> featherweight title. It is a big step up for the 22-year-old from Middlesbrough. All the more amazing given that he's taken the fight at just two weeks' notice. Impressive. Yeah, Truscott has a perfect 10 wins from 10 fights. He's been touted as one of the next big stars of British boxing, but this is a big step up and a chance to prove the hype. Andy Kerr went and met him. Just decided, yeah, well, I've never been given these like, title opportunities before. I've always had to work for him, I was given the opportunity. So, just got to grab it with both hands now, really. You're only 22. Is this too young to go for your first title? No. No. You ready? I'm ready, yeah, of course. I've been ready since I've been nine years old and I've had in the boxing gym. And then I suppose the added advantage is you are fighting at virtually your, your home territory. Eston Academy is only a stone's throw from here. Yeah, just a, I don't have to walk five minutes down the road. But like I say, I'll, I, it doesn't matter, two weeks' notice, there's still going to be 600, 700 people there. Two weeks' notice, I can do it and sell that many tickets. So if I've got a bit more notice, I would have sell it, sold even more. But when, you, when he comes in, walks into the arena and I just, um, 700 smoggies screaming and shouting, and he's about to be intimidating, so hopefully that can get with him a bit as well. Absolutely. He's fighting uh, at Featherweight, fe Featherweight, featherweight yeah. title. What do you say to the detractors, if you like, who say that you were a natural super feather? Because you have fought up there. Yeah, well, that, that, that's a big point. When, you, when you're an up-and-comer, you have to fight lads who, they're, gonna, they're not going to come down in weight to fight you at your pot away because they're going to be bigger and stronger than them so they like to be able to have the tea in that you know and I'm naturally if ever I walk I walk around nine six nine seven if, and that's with eating loads of food you know what I mean so I make the way easy nine four is super feather and I get down to that without even dying dieting really do you know what I mean so I'm a featherweight I'll, I'll be a featherweight for a long time now and all so ten fights only one stoppage, though, at featherweight, will you be a more dangerous fighter than your yeah. super feather? Yeah, I'm a lot crisp. I, I feel a lot crisper last year. And I can, well, like I say, I'm fighting naturally people who are naturally my weight, so I believe uh, I'll break them up and stop them. And I, with it being more rounds as well, I believe down the stretch, that's when I'm a better fighter. Uh, I slow people down and what make them fight how I want them to fight then. Who, do, who have you learnt the most from? Because your style is quite unique, isn't it? And it's it's great to watch. Who do you think you've taken your inspiration from? When I first started, when I first started going down the pro gyms and spam, Michael Hunter brought me on tremendously. He showed me how hard he had to work and how hard he had to fight because he doesn't mess about and he just comes for you. I went and sparred with um, John Murray and. It, him as well because of his strength and his power and but I don't know I think when people stand off me I seem I don't I learn but I don't think I just go with the flow when people are coming at me and pushing me that makes me learn more because it's harder than I think you've got to have that hard spars and easy spars so I like to say John Murray and um, Michael Hunter I'd say learn me the most really through sparring. Finally Friday night Commonwealth title fight if you win people really will sit up and take notice there's been plenty of hype for the last yeah. 18 months do you think you will be the Commonwealth champion yeah definitely not not one doubt in my mind whatsoever I've got too much I've dreamed of this since I've been nine year old from walking in a boxing gym you know and it's up to me now to grab it with both hands and plus people like, all these people are coming with their spend their hard earned cash on me and we haven't got much around the year anyways and they spend their hard earned cash to come and watch me box I won't disappoint them. Paul oh, Truscott there speaking to Andy Kerr. Now, Steve, he really has got the confidence, hasn't he? He's no doubt that he's, he's going to beat him. He's got the confidence. And also, I like what he said there. He said, the people are spending their hard-earned money to come and see me fight. And that's the way it works. You know, they're all paying 30, 35, or 40 quid, or 45 pounds to see him fight. Now, the, the, the one thing in his advantage, he's a bit inexperienced with 10 bouts, but he's a tidy little boxer. And he's beaten all of the right men. And he's beaten them. He's hardly lost a round through his career. And he's a nice boxer. Not bang. He's only stopped one guy, I think, in 10. But the guy he's boxing is Samanu Akaba from ah. Ghana has never left Africa and African fighters don't travel very well no. okay very different style I imagine well, it's just a different it's, it's not just the, it's a lot different lifestyle it's different food it's different temperature and if if, the, if there's any luck the promoters brought him in quite short notice five days he's arrived up in the northeast 
probably freezing cold. He's yep. come from Accra, which is a lovely place. It's hot basically all year round. Suddenly he's freezing cold, and they will, you know, there'll, there'll be no concessions for food. They'll be trying to serve him food that looks disgraceful, looks horrible. That's all part of it, you know. Yeah. That's part of my trade. And that, and that gives Paul a little advantage because it's, it's in his hometown, or as good as his hometown. I think it's in Sunderland. Yeah, he's from Middlesbrough. Yeah. So, I mean, it's fantastic. And well, sadly, Paul is part of a group of very good boxers we've got in this country who are British champions, Commonwealth champions, fighting for European titles, sometimes winning them, who are slipping under the radar. They're fighting in these basically anonymous, obscure Friday night shows. And it's a little bit sad because we, we talked earlier on about the top tier, the elite, uh, the elite group, and they get a lot of coverage. And we've got some fantastic amateurs. We're going to talk to a couple in a minute, and we're going to talk about a few others who have much higher profile than most of the championship quality British boxers we've got. And I think we've got to try and join these two. And that's something, if I can do a plug for Satana, that's something we're thinking of trying to do in a sort of best of British series. We've got to join these guys who are good enough to fight for a British title, but are still years away from making international press. We've got to bring the two together marry them. There's a, good, there's a big pool of talent of British boxers oh, right now, oh, so it's a good time to strike. Let me tell you something, there's six or seven hundred pros in this country, and people online tend to moan and say, oh, there's no one around. Rubbish. We've got, at the moment, we've got about 60 fighters who I think are good quality fighters. We've got some fantastic talent at the moment. We just need to see a few more of the, the guys who are toiling almost anonymously in title defence. A guy called Rendell Monroe, fantastic kid, won a European title a couple of months ago in a great shock against the Spanish kid. Fights in obscurity in Nottingham in front of 1,100 people. It's a, it's a sin. But you know what? What did Big Don say to me when he put his arm on my shoulder? He said, you don't get what you deserve in boxing. You get what you negotiate. And that's what I'm saying. Well, I think I'm, taking a leaf, I'm taking a leaf out of Don King's book, that's for don't sure. Don't put your arm around me unless you buy me a stake. <laughs> I'll put my arm around you and I'll rest my hand on my pile of cash I got on the other side. Right, and joining us now too.